Don't fix your ego. Hello, this is Chris speaking Shores of Infinity with a video about fixing your ego. What most people do is to try to fix their ego. I do not recommend this. And I mention this because in one of my last videos about uh, trauma healing and inner pain, there were some misunderstandings. Many people thought I was advocating, I was advising them to fix their ego, to fix their trauma. That is not what trauma therapy is about. I said that it's a good idea to do trauma therapy if you had a trauma in your past. But trauma therapy is not any kind of psychotherapy like psychoanalysis or behavioral therapy. Trauma therapy is really going to the trauma. It's not a talking therapy. It's a sensing therapy. It's not that you have to go there for weeks or months or years and talk about stuff. That doesn't do any good. It even can make it worse. Talking can make it worse. And talking is something you do with the mind. Trauma therapy is something you do with your body. So if you try to fix your mind, fix your psyche, fix your ego, fix your personality and so on, it's a hopeless endeavor. It's actually parts of the mind trying to fix the mind. It's what Mike Helwig calls the inner critic and the inner rebel, for example. They cannot fix anything. They're part of the problem. Real trauma therapy, and you may only... It, it's possible that you only have to do it once. One session. It's possible. Anyway, real trauma therapy reconnects you with the parts you have disassociated from. You have split off the parts that you don't want to feel anymore. At some point, a separation has taken place within your own psyche. And to reconnect to these old parts is trauma therapy. But that's not fixing anything. It's just um, sensing something that you have suppressed more or less consciously. Nothing is missing, nothing is lacking, nothing is broken. It's just suppressed. Once you have the courage to reconnect to these parts, they will come back home. They want to come back home. They don't want to be in the basement. They don't want to be in the closet. They don't want to be in a grave, forgotten and lost. They want to be reintegrated. And that's actually quite easy if you have the courage to feel that pain one more time. And once you do that, it dawns on you that your personality cannot be fixed. It's not what we try to do in spirituality on the path to enlightenment to fix something. There is nothing to be fixed. There's another video about that. There is nothing to be fixed. That's not the issue here. You're not incomplete. You're not, there's not anything wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. Voices in your head that tell you that you're stupid or ugly, or that there's something wrong with you, that you're flawed somehow, that you're missing something. This is part of the trauma and this, uh, these voices, they will disappear once they are reintegrated into the whole that is you. And then you will also realize that there's no one home. This personality, it's parts of you who are talking to each other, like a split personality, like a multiple personality. If these parts are reintegrated and if they make peace with one another, this inner dialogue will stop. All this thinking and in a dialogue and intense emotions and so on, like fear and shame and guilt, there are only um, effects of the trauma and the trauma responses, like freeze, fight, flight and fawn. Your obsession with your own personality and its weaknesses, with its strengths and faults and whatever, 
your obsession with your thinking and your emotions will stop because you will see that there is no one home. There's, there are only these old programs and habits replaying again and again and again. The repetition trick of Maya. Here represented by your own personality. Your ego is not the problem. Your trauma is not the problem. The, prom the, the problem is that you believe in it. You believe in the story, in the narrative. And this story, this narrative can never be fixed because it's a story, it's a fiction. You cannot fix a fiction. You can change the story, but you cannot fix it. It will never be perfect because it's only, it's not a being, it's a story. It's something invented that doesn't really exist. We need to say goodbye to this narrative that is so familiar to us, that we have identified with. Just as you have identified with other stories and other attributes, like being male or female or American or British or Indian or German or French, being tall or short, fat or thin, intelligent or stupid, whatever, all these attributes, they're just stories. They're not real. They don't matter. They have no intrinsic value. They only have value because you give it value. You invest in them. You believe in them. You make them real. Look at the last video, Simulacra and Simulation, how we ourselves participate in the illusion of Maya and making stuff that is not real, real. We invent things, stories, items, technology, and then think that's more real than the reality, which in itself is not even real because it's Maya. So I never suggested to anyone to fix his or her personality to fix his or her ego, to fix his or her psyche, because that's, one, that's impossible, and two, it's useless anyway. All we have to do is stop our obsession with our own story. It's like something, like someone is only interested in one thing, let's say baseball. And you can only talk with uh, we can only talk about baseball with him. And if you talk about anything else, if you say anything else, he will say, uh, okay, but what does that have to do with baseball? We would immediately see this as something strange, as an obsession. But we do this all the time ourselves. We all the time talk about our personality and how we take it seriously. Even people who say they are spiritual and they don't take their personality seriously, they are very easily offended. And if you are offended about anything, then you still take your personality seriously. If, if you don't take it seriously, it your own personality and those of others, what is there to be offended about? If you still have an inner critic or an inner rebel, then there is some trauma part in you that has not been resolved. And with resolved, I mean, it's just to see that it is a trauma part that wants to be reintegrated. That's all. You just have to see it and feel it. It's not a thinking method. You cannot think it. Because the thinking itself, the inner dialogue, is a result of trauma. If you can stop your thinking and your emotions at will, on command, then no problem. If you can't, there's a possibility to look into this. And it's actually really easy. You just have to have the courage to feel it, to sense it in your body. And in my view, no one explains this any better than Mike Helwig, a German psychologist. But there are others who say similar things, of course. And this is also why normal psychology and normal self-help 
and normal self-improvement and all kinds of courses and theories that don't help because they're trying to fix things. Even wanting enlightenment can be just an inner part of yourself that feels some minority complex, some feeling of lack, some feeling of not being good enough and wanting to fill this with pursuing the path of enlightenment. This can be the inner critic, the voice that always tells you negative things about yourself. That can be a driving factor to look for enlightenment because this part is hoping that it will be complete then, which is not totally wrong, it's just very different. The way to be complete is to get in contact with your soul, with your intuition, with your psychic being, whatever you want to call it. But there's no way to feel complete by fixing the ego, by fixing the personality. That's never going to work because that thing is not real anyway. It's fake. It's a story. It's a bunch of habits and customs and memories. So thank you for liking and subscribing. It helps other people to find the channel. Thank you to all my patrons and thank you for joining me as a patron. That means a lot and see you soon.